Hola, guitarristas. Seguimos en el Thomas Gearhead University y esta vez tengo a mi lado una leyenda de YouTube. Se trata nada más y nada menos que de Tom King. Hello, Tom King. How are you? Hello, everybody. How are you? Fine, thanks. What do you think so far of the Thomas Gearhead University? Well, this is my first year here and I'm having a blast. I think it's a wonderful setup and the, they have a lot of helpers to the making to make the videos very easy for us to work on creating good content. Uh, so there's a lot of staff, which I'm very thankful for. Um, a lot of gear, which is always nice. And, uh, you know, it's a nice environment. It's good weather, good people, life is good. Yeah. Well, I believe this is a loud way to say that internet is important, YouTube is important, people creating content is important. Even though there are also people here that are mainly musicians, there are lots of them who are YouTubers, and you were a pioneer of gear, YouTube, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how do you feel when you see that you were right, so right, when you started at that time? Well, when I started, there was no such thing as a YouTuber. We just uploaded stuff because I don't even know why. <laughs> you know, uh, but it's nice to see that the community has grown and uh, there's other people out there that enjoy the same interest. And now we're at a stage where we're collaborating and it's like a, a, a family almost, you know where everyone's happy to see each other at events like this, because uh, we're all aware of each other, but we don't always have an opportunity to see each other. So it's nice that we have that opportunity here. I believe that the perception of people, of YouTubers by people, is that it's someone who's telling the truth, or at least something closer to the truth they expect, because uh, back in the day, they only had like the typical publicity advertisement that comes from the probably the the brand that makes a product so they always gonna say good things about the product um, do you agree with that I mean do you think that the key of the success of youtubers and YouTube is honesty that's a good question uh, I think honesty is um, like everything sometimes you need to really pay close attention to what somebody might be doing I think there's a lot of stuff on YouTube today where you think it's a honest review, but it's really an ad, right? Because maybe they're working with a manufacturer. Absolutely. And sometimes it's it's hard to hard to see that. So um, that's why, like for myself, I go out of my way many times to say, hey, a company sent this to me, or hey, I bought this, or maybe giving an honest opinion. Uh, I think you need to really listen to uh, or pay attention to those people that are disclosing everything. And if somebody's not disclosing it, and even for myself, if I buy, um, I'm interested in buy, buying a microphone and someone's like, oh, this is great. Is it really great? Or are they working with the company? Because sometimes as a, a person watching YouTube, I want an honest review. So like everything, when you read a magazine ad or you watch a video or watch on TV, you really just want someone to be honest about what they're doing with the, the product. So I think there's a mixed bag yes. out there. So you think that eventually if lots of YouTubers start not telling that the products they, get, they have, it's a gift or, or something like that, do you think that might destroy the confidence that their viewers have on him? Um, sure. Anytime somebody's not honest, it could destroy confidence. Yes. Um, but what, what I always try to do is look at what somebody plays all the time, not just for the uh, review. Okay. So, for instance, if I'm reviewing a microphone and I play a Stratocaster, and then I review a pedal and I play a Stratocaster, and uh, whatever, maybe I like Stratocasters. That's yeah. the review. Right. So sometimes it's not just about the topic they're talking about. It's what are they using all the time? That's what I look for. Let's say for a moment you had to tell it's this is something you will never do because I know your channel and you're always honest. But let's imagine a parallel world where you had to speak good of something you don't like. Would you be able to do that or your face will would tell the no, truth? No. In fact, um, And I've said this before, sometimes a company will reach out to me and say, hey, you want to review uh, something? If I, sometimes I just say no because I'm not interested in it. Uh, sometimes 
I'll say, sure, let me try it. And sometimes I've sent gear back that I didn't um, like. Now, I don't do videos on stuff I don't like because it's a waste of my time. It's a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> of the viewers too. And the viewers' time, right? You know, if I buy a microphone and uh, or a company sends me a microphone and I hate it, I just send it back or whatever. Um, uh, you know, because for me, it's all positive, and I, I genuinely have to enjoy the product for me to talk about the product. And again, it, so to answer your question, no, I would never say something was good if I didn't really like it. Never. Let's go back in time when you started making videos. Um, I guess at that time, your intention was simply to share, because at that time, People were not so worried, perhaps, I don't know, were not so worried about the Google algorithms, YouTube algorithms, watch time, yeah. this thing. How were things at that time? Well, you just, uh, you didn't pay attention to anything. You just uploaded a video and that was, that was it. Um, now is so much uh, um, analytics available to you, you like, how many views did I get? How long did it take? And, you know, all these different metrics. It could drive you crazy. It's like a stock market. How is my stock doing? Is it, is it up? Is it down? Is it like, you know, you could get carried away, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, there's a, someone did a video about the YouTube al algorithm and uh, one of these big, like, um, algorithm YouTube experts. Yep. And he said... Uh, I don't remember his name, but it was a good video. He said, you cannot chase the algorithm because it's always moving, yeah. right? So the most important thing is just do what you enjoy. <laughs> Seriously, because if you're not enjoying it, if I'm putting out a video to satisfy an algorithm, I'm not thinking of myself and I'm not thinking of the viewer. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to chase something that is not real. And, and I guess you will have seen also the changes for guitar stores because at a certain point i guess many stores especially small stores might think ah youtube and internet is not for us it's not, it's not something that we need but nowadays every guitar store or pedal store need all their social media uh i guess for some stores this process has been tough uh, what do you think about this this process uh you know it's interesting with guitar stores in general because, uh, so you said, let's go back, right, in time. So once upon a time, a guitar store picked products to carry. And then they told everybody how great their products are because they have to sell their products. <laughs> Today, people buy online, okay? Um, and people are influenced in different ways. Maybe they're influenced on a review, a video, whatever. So guitar stores today, it's not about telling their customer, buy this because it's great. It's about maybe um, providing outstanding customer service. Maybe it's about creating a relationship with their consumers. And it's also about maybe staying in tune with what people really want, not what they think they want, but what do people really want. So let's say that at that time, they created a demand. They would tell which guitar you have to yeah. like, and now it's more people who like those guitars and then they have to buy it. Is it like that? I think so, yeah, I think so. It's like people have the power. People do have the power, <laughs> absolutely. That's it, you, you, you said it really well. You know, people are more informed today than they've ever been. And I think people are smart. They can tell, you know, they could tell what's fake and they could tell what's real. You know, they could tell what's passionate and they could tell what's not passionate. Um, and you know what? You look at all the gear in these tents, uh, all the, there must be a hundred guitars in there. Everybody likes something different. Yes. So they're going to pick a retailer that carries maybe the guitar that they uh, like. So the most important thing is just treat your customers right. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Yeah. This question is not directly related to YouTube. It's our website has a forum and our users were arguing and discussing about what's better, cheap guitars pre-internet or cheap guitars post-internet. What do you think? Um, cheap, I mean like super, super affordable. The cheap guitars today are better than they've ever been. It's the best moment. 
it's a good time because, um, and this isn't an advertisement, okay? <laughs> just to be clear, Harley Benton has prototypes in there. I just did a video on their prototypes. They're like 300 Euro guitars, staggered tuning keys, locking tuner keys, stainless steel frets, roasted maple fretboard. Top features. <laughs> Wilkinson Bridge, 300 euros. So yeah, today you can buy a cheap guitar that's a good guitar. Now, that's not true for every cheap guitar, right? There's a lot of junk out there, but if you, if you, there is, there, there are some diamonds in the rough, so to speak, right? Yeah. There are some good things out there. Uh, it doesn't mean every cheap guitar is good, but there are some companies out there making good, affordable guitars. As a YouTuber, you know your viewers. Yeah. Um, my question is, how much a viewer chooses one channel because of the personality or the content? I mean, what's more important to you, the content itself, the personality of the, per the person who's speaking at the channel? What do you think about that? That's a really good question. Um, I would say it's like an 80-20. 80-20? Yeah. I think the, because I've been on YouTube for about 10 years. I know a lot of the viewers. We have created a relationship Absolutely. over the years. I would say 80% of the people that watch my content know who I am. And then you get 20% of the people that found my content because they were looking for something. And you could tell because sometimes I get uh, comments, people leave comments saying like, dude, what's up with the bad boys? It's like, okay, clearly you're brand new. Um, but people also leave in the comments of, hey man, I loved your video, I'll give you one of those, right? So they've been around, right? Everybody has a personality, right? Everyone's personality is different. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I am off camera, the same person on camera. Um, and some people like it and some people don't, and that's okay. I'm not for everybody, right? Uh, nobody is. Um, but maybe 80-20 or 70-30. I wouldn't say 50-50 because um, I don't have a million subscribers, uh, but the subscribers I have are very loyal, good people, and uh, it's a good community. Yeah. And now imagine you had to start, uh, something happens and you have to start your channel from scratch. Is there something you would make different compared to when you start? It was a different time, everything was so different, I get it, but... I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. Yes. It's a lot of work. It's honest, I don't know if I would do this. If I had to start from scratch, there's so much out there today. I, w I think I watch more videos than I make videos. Do you have any favorite YouTuber? Do I have any what? Uh, favorite YouTuber. Yeah, I mean, Steve from Boston, Boston. Uh, Philip McKnight, um, all, all the guys here I watch. I mean, I know all of them. Uh, I know... I know 99% of the YouTubers that are here. And there's also people out there that are in here that I like. Um, so I have to tell you the truth. There aren't many uh, YouTubers that I don't like. I, like. Like if you asked me, who don't I like? Yes. I couldn't think of a name. That means we're in a good moment for YouTube, probably. I think so, you know. Um, that would be, that's a hard question to answer because I think everyone does it, you know, listen, you have to remember, we're not making a lot of money doing this. So there's passion behind it. And when somebody is passionate about doing what they do, you got to respect that. And I do, I respect that. Um, I think everyone's doing a great job. And you know what's nice is everybody has their own way, their own approach, their own style. And that's what makes it fun and exciting. Thank you for your time. Oh, it's thank you so nice. for giving me the opportunity to talk on your channel, and I look forward to, you know, talking to you again and yeah, checking uh, everything out. So thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you so much. See you all later. Hasta luego, guitarristas. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>